Thank you for joining this lesson. We're going to look at scale drawing. Number 21, four pegs A, B, C, and D are on the vertices of a plain field. B is 360 meters north of A. D is 420 meters from A on a bearing of 100 degrees. The bearing of C from B is 120 and the compass bearing of D from C is south 25 degrees east. Using a scale of 1 cm represent 60 cm. Represent the information on a scale drawing. Therefore, we're going to do a scale drawing here. Mm -hmm. We are told that uh, B is 360 meters north of A. So I'll begin with A. I'll begin with point A. Let's assume this is point A. This is a compass at A. This is point A. So north of A means when we just go upwards from A, we just go upwards until we cover 360 meters. And now according to the scale here, according to the scale here, that one centimeter will represent 60 meters. This should be meters, sorry. Then it means instead of 360, we're going to divide with 60 to have 6 centimeters. So I'm just going to measure 6 centimeters. 6 centimeters. So from A northwards, 6 centimeters. 6 centimeters. This is going to be the position of B. This is the position of B because I've measured my 6 centimeters. Now the next we are told further that uh, D is 420 meters from A on a bearing of 100. So from A on a bearing of 100. Now that this is true bearing 100 degrees. This is true bearing 100 degrees. So from A I will just measure 100 degrees measure 100 degrees and strictly from the north towards the clockwise direction that is what you call true bearing from the north towards the clockwise direction so from north in the clockwise direction I measure 100 I measure 100 so now I will produce this line which shows 100 degrees from the north of A, 100 degrees. So this is 100 degrees, which means we are leaving just 80, just 80 degrees at that point. Now I have to measure this distance. Instead of 420 meters, according to this scale, I will need seven. I will need seven centimeters. So from zero. 7 centimeters then I produce the mark so this is 7 centimeters then now this is my points, point D so at point D I will need a compass now that I have 80 degrees at this point I will just need to measure another 80 on the upper side Another 80 on the upper side. Then when I connect now with this 80, I'll get a very good north. Yes. Because I have 80 degrees here, another 80. That will be a very perfect north. I'm continuing. Remember this is D. Finally. We have the bearing of C according to information here. The bearing of C from B is 120. So I'll just need to measure 120 from B. 120 degrees from B. So at B, 120 degrees. That is a true bearing. So from the north, clockwise direction, 
120. 120. Therefore, I produce. I produce this line. So that is the line for 120 degrees to mean that I've just left 60 here. Then uh, more instructions are guiding us that uh, the compass bearing of D from C is south 25 degrees towards east. So from C, uh, the bearing of D from C, it should be noted that if for us to access D from C, we need to assume that uh, C is at a point here. Then for us to go to D, for us to go to D, we need from south, we measure 25 degrees towards east. Then we produce. That means if this is 25 degrees, we should have a 25 here. Now it means if the bearing of D from C is south towards east 25 degrees, then the bearing of C from D will now be from the north 25 degrees towards west. Therefore, it means now, with these instructions, the bearing of C from D is from the north, 25 degrees towards the west. Let me connect the two now. 25 degrees from the north towards the west. So while we are at D, we need 25 degrees from the north. 25 degrees from the north and towards the west just 25 degrees and we produce the line 25 degrees yes that is the 25 degrees from north towards west from d so that you may know where c is that means for us to raise a compass here, because we have measured a 25 here, then at this point of intersection, we will measure a 25 on the other side. We will just need a 25 on this other side. That means I will measure 25 exactly at this point. Then I produce now the compass. Now that I've measured 25, I produce the compass here. So this is going to be point C, whereby this is a 25. Now with the 25 there, it can be understood that uh, from C to D, it is from the south towards the east, 25 degrees. That is why I interpreted it and concluded that from D to C, we need from north 25 degrees towards west, according to the rough work here. Using the scale diagram, determine part 1, the compass bearing of C from A. Compass bearing, strictly the compass bearing of C from A. So that means I should first of all connect C and A. Yes. Now, of C from A, it means we need the acute anchor that connects C and A. Oh, C from A. And that is the anchor at this point. The ankle is going to be... The ankle is going to be 57. But now we are from the north and towards east. So, from the north, this is now how we write it. From the north... 57 degrees towards the east. That is how we state the compass bearing. If it was true bearing, it could have been stated 0, 057. Just that way. Just that way. But now we needed this. Again, <clears throat> the distance between 
C and D. The distance between C and D. So the distance between C and D should be measured from C to D. This distance from C to D. I measure this distance now on my scale from C to D. This is the distance 4.7, exactly 4.7. So 4.7 centimeters should be multiplied with the scale of 60 because one centimeter represents 60 meters. So 4.7 by 60 gives us 200 and Eight two meters. The distance is two hundred and eight two meters. The perimeter of the region enclosed by the four pegs. Enclosed by the four pegs. Aha. So we need to know this distance. Remember, instead of this one, we have a distance of three hundred and sixty meters. Instead of seven, we have four hundred and twenty meters. This one has been confirmed to be 282 meters. Then now we need to know the distance BC. So the distance BC can still be measured B to C. This is a 5.6. So 5.6. 5.6 has to be multiplied again by the scale 5.6 by 60 this becomes 336 336 meters so now because this is 336 meters now perimeter is all the way around and perimeter is going to be when we add the length of all the boundaries 360 plus 420 plus uh, 282 plus 336 this is going to give us the perimeter in meters so we add 282 we add 420 we add 360 this becomes 1398 1398 meters so that is the perimeter of the region enclosed by the four pegs.